get towards the end of the preseason. You also have some younger players that are still fighting for roles once they get sent down, should the roster shake out as it will. You have some players that are going to be going down to the American Hockey League, but they want to go down there with the full notice is that Bill Armstrong and his staff is that when they need to call up a player, they're going to be one of the first call-ups. So still a lot to play for so far. You look at a guy like Kyler Yamamoto, who I think has had a really nice camp too. And a guy like Josh Doan, who has played three games. Right. He's already got a goal and two assists, staking his claim to be on this team come opening night. Head coach Andre Turigny has been very complimentary about his group, but he also has some things that his team needs to clean up before the regular season. What stood out to you about practice yesterday? Yesterday at practice, pretty much every drill involved board play. And along the boards where the yellow kick plate and the boards meets the ice, a lot of work there. Last game wasn't good enough in the defensive zone. If you can clean that up, they're going to be able to get out cleaner, spend less time in the D zone. We're just a few moments from puck drop here at SAP Center. We will come back in just a bit with a little bit more pregame, and then we'll get you puck drop here between the Utah Hockey Club and the San Jose Sharks. SAP Center. We're getting ready for preseason action between the Utah Hockey Club and the San Jose Sharks. Mike Fulta and Nick Olchek. And Nick, we're getting our second look tonight at Tej Aginla, a player that impressed us a couple nights ago. He got in a little bit of penalty trouble against Colorado, but there's a lot of positives to be excited about. Well, there's some players where the puck finds them, and there are other players that wait for the puck. Tej Aginla, there is no hesitation in his game, whether he has the puck on his stick and he's trying to attack or if the defender has it and he's trying to go after and get it back and allow his team to then go on offense. I've been so impressed, whether it's been in games, practices, or morning skate today. The puck jumps off of his stick. This guy's going to score a lot of goals in his career. So looking for him to continue to build, get some confidence playing at the National Hockey League level. He was taken sixth overall by the Utah Hockey Club, the first ever draft pick by Utah just a couple of months ago. Only 18 years of age. Somebody who's seen a little bit more hockey than him, Connor Ingram. We're going to see him in net tonight for Utah. The goaltending's been good in the preseason. Ingram is looking to take uh, another step this year. He's coming off a really strong year last year playing behind a, a defensive group that was not one of the better ones in the league. And give all the credit in the world to Bill Armstrong and his staff for going out, fortifying the defense, bringing in guys like Marino and Sergachev and Cole and Bortuzzo, which are going to help take the defense to the next step especially going on in front. But I think Connor Ingram's had a great preseason. He played the home game there, the first ever game at Delta Center, coming off a career season, as you had mentioned, for games played, wins, save percentage, goals against average, pretty much everything. I think he's bound for a big year, and it seems like when he's in between the pipes, the team is able to just breathe and play calm and get to their structure sooner than the other team. So looking for him to continue to build for the preseason. We are getting ready for the anthem here in San Jose, so we'll step aside and then bring you the start of period one up next.
It's ready to start here at the SAP Center in San Jose, California. The Utah Hockey Club and the San Jose Sharks about to go head to head. This is preseason game number five for Utah. Two more after this and then October 8th, the start of the regular season, but still a few more tune-ups still to go. And last week we saw some of the NHL regulars, you know, starting to turn on the engines a little bit. Now it's more so full go these next few games. Well, look, the legs are there. You can get the sense of some of these players that have played a bunch of games. Look at a guy like Josh Doan, already three games played here in the preseason. You're gearing up and ready to go for opening night. Connor Ingram on one end in net for Utah. Mackenzie Blackwood is in between the pipes for San Jose. The Sharks in their all-teal look. Utah in salt white with black numbers and mountain blue trim. Puck starts out in the San Jose zone and comes around to Sergachev, whose shot was blocked, and the Sharks are able to pitch it out, and they have numbers up ahead. This is taken in by Sean Dursey, and a good thing, too, because the top line for the San Jose Sharks featuring the first round pick, or the first overall pick in this most recent draft, Macklin Celebrini was coming up the ice. That was a great read from Sean Dursey, and those of our fans watching on Utah HC+. He recognized that his defense partner, Mikhail Sergachev, was down. The puck got by him. Dursey came across right away, pressure, and forced a turnover. Awesome work from Dursey. Utah working to get the puck out of their own zone now. That's Maverick Lamoureux sending it up to Josh Doan. Doan with a shot that missed high and wide. This is in the San Jose Sharks end. Puck on the wall. Doan got a stick on it. And then it's forced in a little bit deeper. This is Will Smith turning tail for it. Smith taking fourth overall in two, uh, two drafts to go back in 2023. Some high-end guys here for the Sharks in tonight's preseason action. Off the stick of Lawson Kraus. This goes out of play a few rows deep. A minute and 12 seconds into our first period. No score yet. Just to put a bow on that Sean Dursey play. As a defenseman, aside from defending and trying to play offense, like your role is to help your partner, support your defense partner. And that's exactly what Dursey did there is he recognized that circuit chip was going to get beat. So he slid over. It provided that pressure, but he had to be 100%, because if the puck gets by him, it's a 2 on 0 on Connor Ingram. Dursey was the number one D-man in Arizona last year, but with the arrival of Mikhail Sergachev to Utah, there should be some should be less pressure on Dursey. And a dynamic pair. If they're going to play together moving forward, you got two guys that are dynamic on the offensive side to read off each other well. Here comes San Jose across the line into the Utah zone, taken around back by Alexander Wenberg. Gets it back up to Cody Ceci, formerly of the Edmonton Oilers last year. That's blockered away by Connor Ingram into the corner as Utah gets to a loose puck, and it's sent out of the zone. Ben McCartney scurries down the far wall one-on-one -on -one with Ceci. McCartney trying to hold off the big defenseman from behind. Eventually, San Jose gets numbers back defensively, and it's cleared out of the zone to center as Utah looks to regroup. Quickly back up for McCartney, number 62 in white. Tapped across the line by 85, Aku Ratu. He was very good a couple of games ago on a fourth line with Utah. This is Ratu in the far corner of the offensive zone. Ratu collects it and moves it along. Kyler Yamamoto got a stick on it, and it's in deep. Check delivered by Andrew Agazino as Sergachev pinches down the half wall to keep the play in the offensive end. Agazino trying to dig it out of the pile as Ratu is locked up with the skates of one of the Sharks. That's Jack Thompson. Eventually, San Jose comes away with it. And this is the veteran Scott Sabrin down the left wing. Flipped in as Carl Gunstrom of the Sharks goes in after it. Sabrin there supporting as well. Puck goes low to high, stolen away by Yamamoto. And this comes out to center as the Sharks have possession once again. Sent in by Matt Benning. This deflects off a stick to the side of Connor Ingram as Sean Dursey keeps it moving for Mikhail Sergachev. That puck deflects in front and bounced away from Tyler Toffoli, one of the big additions for San Jose this offseason. He signed a four-year, $24 million deal with the Sharks. Barrett Hayden across the line. This is Tej Aginla. His pass broken up by Tyler Toffoli. And it's sent out. This is Toffoli with the puck, number 73 in Teal. He hands it back to William Eklund to give and go to Foley. Side of the net, threw it across everybody. And it's on the left side with Mario Ferraro. That shot was blocked by Barrett Hayden. There's Macklin Celebrini, the former BU Terrier and Hobie Baker winner, the youngest ever Hobie Baker winner. Just 18 years of age from North Vancouver, British Columbia. Check delivered in the corner by the veteran defenseman Ian Cole of Utah. Celebrini dangles to the slot, then had it stripped away by Clayton Keller. Keller moves to center, dumps it in, and Utah will make a change. That's a real nice defensive play from Clayton Keller. The puck was on the 
opposite side of his left wing area in the defensive zone. And as the weak side winger, you got to be in that high slot to help out a play like that. That's a really nice defensive effort from Keller. This is out of the corner and the Utah end is Utah has to defend once again and they do and get it out to center. Matias Michelli weaves his way across the blue line. Tried to leave it for Doan but San Jose read that play well defensively. And here comes Matt Smith. Uh, Will Smith I beg your pardon. It's going to be Smith and Celebrini centers one and two. For a Very long young time. core. Yep. And they are hoping that that's a Marner Matthews Taves Kane type of deal and, and two players that are past first so I think moving forward I think that's why a guy like Tyler to coming into the mix is going to help. This is Luke Cunning on that far side wall tangled up by a couple of Utah skaters including Milos Kellerman who chips it up that far wing McCartney giving chase as well and Utah with possession Jack Thompson the 22 year old from Ontario winds it in around behind Connor Ingram here in the Utah end Cunning on the puck in the trapezoid. Now he walks it over to the far side half wall. Luca Cagnona sends it behind the net. Puck in front, courtesy of Barkley Goodrow, the former New York Ranger. Now it's dragged along by Winberg. This is Goodrow from the corner back up to Thompson. He peers in. Goodrow along the blue line. Thompson a drive. That was blocked by traffic in front. A lot of bodies in front of Ingram, but Utah gets it out to center and all the way in. And Utah can make a change. No, they can't. That was wrong side of the red icing call here. Yeah, that was Milos Kellerman who just was about an inch on his defensive side of the red line. And for those of our new fans, you have to get to the offensive side of the red line to be able to dump the puck all the way down past the other team's goal line for it to not be icing. Kellerman couldn't quite get the line. And all of a sudden now, Utah's not able to change. And the faceoff comes in their defensive zone. So here's Kevin Stenland at the draw. Stenland at the faceoff in the D zone. He wins it back. That's one of his fortes right there. It was 52.5% last year with the Florida Panthers who ended up winning the Stanley Cup. That is a huge get at the center ice position. Here comes Ratu gaining the blue line into the offensive end for Utah. And he gets belted up against the glass by Ferraro. Up top to Maverick Lamaru with a wrist shot block that comes all the way back to Ian Cole, his D partner on the left point. Down to the corner it goes, and Cole backhands it into the corner once more, trying to keep some pressure on San Jose. Cole pinches down this time, activating from that left point position. Ratu spun around. It's on the stick of Carl Gunstrom for San Jose. Sharks trying to exit. This is Lamaru's turn on the far wing to keep it in, but now San Jose is able to flip it out to center as both teams make some changes. We're about six minutes into the first period. Good flow, but no score. 0-0. Zero, zero. Aginla sharply up ahead, the sixth overall pick in this last draft found Barrett Hayden, who sent it off the end glass. Now Matt Benning with it. He fanned on that rim around in his own zone. That allows Vlad Kolyachonuk to activate a bit. Checked up against the wall by Max Zuber there. Good play by Zuber because once Celebrini gets going, he is a danger. Now Celebrini turns it over, but San Jose is back to the rescue, and they send it all the way down. That will be icing. Some of the youth may be showing of Macklin Celebrini trying to do maybe a little too much stick handling in front of his own net. And it looked like to me he might have caught an edge as he fell right in front of his net. And, and unfortunately for Utah, not quite able to capitalize as he was going back on a puck, trying to possess it for his team. He got a little bit too low on that edge. Easy to blame the skate sharpener there as he went down. Face-off win by Josh Doan here in the offensive end. Zuber flings one to the far corner as this puck comes behind the goaltender Mackenzie Blackwood. San Jose with the puck. That is William Eklund. He turns it over. Here's Lawson Kraus left circle. His shot was stymied by Ferraro. Kraus. Bending off Ferraro, Kraus, big body in there at 6-4. He does an excellent job at protecting the puck and winning a lot of those board battles that you were touching on earlier. This is Sergachev, right point, dancing around one man. Sergachev sneaks his shot through, and that missed the net wide. He was looking for the stick of Kraus, who almost got a piece of it. Sergachev once again as he scans from the blue line. Wrist shot blocked in front of Blackwood. And San Jose comes out to center three on two. Here comes Celebrini dancing his way in. His shot got blocked. That was Dursey who wore it off the shins. Matias Michelli gains the red line easily and dumps this in. Both teams will make changes. Celebrini does not need much room to get that shot off. A real nice textbook block shot there from Dursey. 
This is Ben McCartney towards the front of the net. That hits Stenland. Ian Cole in the high slot drops it back. McCartney walks his way to the front of the net, gets taken down. It's Kellerman in the corner now. Shot saved by Blackwood. Rebound up in the air and gloved down by Kellerman. He tried to go low to high, but that pass comes all the way back to the goaltender for Utah, Connor Ingram. So Utah will hit refresh here. Just over eight minutes into the first period, 0-0 our score. Barrett Hayden slams on the brakes, one on five, waiting for its mace to join him. Keller shoots off a stick high. That was blocked by a twig in front of Blackwood. Never made it on net. Dug out of the corner by Yamamoto. Comes back up top to Kolya Chonuk. He links up with Barrett Hayden. Hayden shoots, and that went off a shark skate in front of the cage. And it's Cody Cece who eases this down to the opposite blue line and goes off on a change. Utah wants a quick re-up, but that escaped the clutches of Clayton Keller. And this is Luke Cunnan pursuing, but it will be icing against San Jose. We have Cunnan and Keller on the ice together now. The two actually played together back in St. Louis with the St. Louis Junior Blues Triple-A team. Want to know who their coach was? A certain Keith Kachuk, Big Walt. They also had Matthew Kachuk on that team. All three of those guys from the uh, St. Louis, Missouri area. Safe to say that was a pretty good team, huh? I think they did okay. Oh. There were five former first round picks on that team. Special. Keller and Luke Cunnan were a couple of them. Cunnan is number 11 for San Jose. He was with the Sharks last year, 11 goals for him. This is his third season with the organization. Buck in the Utah zone. And a one-timer, that was Cunnan who swung and missed on it. There was a stick in the way, courtesy of Utah. Here comes Alex Wenberg bending his way across the blue line. Wenberg out wide, his shot partially blocked. Jersey on the scene defensively once again. Feels like he's always in the right place. Agazino defending in his own zone as he shoves his man up against the wall and Cunnan moves it back to the left point for Kenyona. Luca Kenyona to the corner. This is Barkley Goodrow. Goodrow was heavily criticized in New York last year, but really came on in the playoffs with six goals for the Rangers. Jersey knocks his man down on this near side. Ratu is able to find an open man for Utah. And up ahead, it's Tej Aginla. Aginla shoots and a shoulder saved by Blackwood. Tej Aginla had a good look there and pulled a quick trigger on Mackenzie Blackwood, who made a confident looking blocker shoulder save. Snapped up ahead by San Jose off the stick. Ingram well out of his net to play it. Here comes that 70s line for San Jose. It's Eklund 72, Celebrini 71, and Tyler Toffoli 73. This is Maverick Lamaru who takes his man down to the corner and will get a holding infraction against Lamaru and Utah with 9.55 left in the first period. It's been a fast moving period, no score yet, and Utah is on the penalty kill when we return here on SEG Media. Nine fifty-five left in the first period here at the SAP Center. 0-0, Utah and San Jose scoreless, but the Sharks have the game's first power play after Maverick Lamaru was booked for holding in the defensive zone. 
And so now we see this Utah penalty kill. We saw them seven times two nights ago against Utah. PK was five of seven. They settled in nicely towards the end of that game in Colorado. But of course, a new cast of characters here tonight. Josh Doan at the draw. He gets some help from Sergachev, but Utah can't clear it out off the draw to Stabian Zetterlin. Linking up now with Macklin Celebrini. High slot, pass across, right to the front, blocked by Sergachev. Flipped back to the left point. And this is Celebrini. He lost it off the wall, and Lawson Krauss gets it out to Doan at center. Utah is able to milk some time. Doan flips it in deep, and we get four fresh penalty killers. 30 seconds into the power play here for San Jose. This is Fabian Zetterland. And now Celebrini, the far side for Podorowski. Back to Tyler to Foley now. This is Jake Wallman. He's quarterbacking this power play unit. To Foley with a long pass over to Celebrini. Now Wallman straight away at the blue line to Foley left circle. It's to Foley, a right-handed shot on the left circle. And then Celebrini, a left-handed shot on the right circle. There's a shot from Connor Ingram with no rebound. 102 left in the power play. Well, zone time, possession, and passing for the San Jose Sharks, but not a whole heck of a lot to the inside as they work it low to high to Foley back to the point for Wallman. And the key for Connor Ingram here, no rebound as he soaks that thing up like a pillow. Well out on the top of his crease there to make a real nice stop. Ian Cole out there with Sergachev, Doan, and Barrett Hayton now. Those are the four killers for Andre Tourigny and Utah. Faceoff is won back by Utah, but it's kept in by Will Smith at the left point. Smith walks it down to the wall. Eklund goes up top to Cagnoni. And now Will Smith right circle. San Jose working it around. There's a sharp shot. Save Ingram. Rebound picked up by Cole and cleared. That was a beautiful last second turn from Ian Cole. The prior play swallowed up by Connor Ingram. That time it hit him, bounced about a couple of feet in front, and that's why you got to have your defenseman there. The veteran Cole able to swipe it away. 30 seconds left in the power play for San Jose. 0-0 game. This is Colin Graff who moves it back up top. Cagnoni and now Eklund, a quick pass across off the stick of Kellerman. Smith catches up to it for San Jose. Around to the near side, Eklund jams it in deeper. Puck bounces up in the air. Eklund took a hard shove from behind. That was Vlad Kolyachonik. Will Smith looking in, tried to make his way past Kellerman, but Zuber caught up to him. Good work there. San Jose back of goal. This is Eklund back up top. Canyoni looking in. Eklund one-timer missed the net. We're back to five on five as Lamaru comes out of the penalty box. And the PK for Utah is one for one with just under eight to go in a scoreless first period. Cody Cece doubling back from his own zone. He passes this into the skates of Cunning down the right wing. Backdoor pass. Goodrow got a stick on it, but couldn't cleanly get that on net. Taken by Sergachev, who backhands one off the glass and back out to center. Clayton Keller, he has his jersey tucked into the back of his pants. Not all players do that, but Keller does. You can't quite see the tail of his number nine. This is now to the tape of Kyler Yamamoto. A cross rink feed for Barrett Hayden in the corner. Utah in the offensive zone. Keller keeps it moving while absorbing a check. Sergachev through the backhand, able to get this down below the goal line once again with Yamamoto and Keller jamming after it. Yamamoto on a PTO, trying to earn his way onto a team and onto this uh, onto this team and into a contract as well. This is back to Sergachev, who winds one up, and Blackwood makes a save with a chest with 6.51 left here in the first period. 0-0 between Utah and San Jose. A clean penalty kill by the Utah Hockey Club has kept us scoreless in period one. We'll be back for more action here in the first in just a moment on SEG Media.
6.51 still to go here at SAP Center. Nick, what have you seen so far in oh, a 0, really, zero game? Yeah, really nice penalty kill so far uh, for the Utah Hockey Club. A lot of different ways to generate momentum throughout the course of a hockey game. Goals, hits, fights, that's great stuff, but you need a lot of momentum just by killing off a penalty. And so far in this game, Utah really didn't give San Jose a whole heck of a lot at all. Kept most of the play to the outside. Connor Ingram made a save. A rebound ended up right out in front of him, and then Ian Cole was right there to swat it away. So, so far, so good while down a man. Ian Cole just hurtled through the air, slamming his body against the glass to try and keep that puck in. Now it's down to the Utah zone with Cole defending. Andrew Agazino collects this puck behind his own net. He played here in San Jose, Agazino. In fact, the last time he was in the NHL was the 22-23 season, and he did play four games with the Sharks. He's been up and down between the minors and the NHL throughout his career. Agazino, 36, 51 NHL games for him. He's had a great career in the minor league. Look out, turnover, Ratu shoots, and a great glove saved by Blackwood at point-blank range. One of the Sharks just fumbled the puck in their own zone. It was gift-wrapped and placed on a platter for Aku Ratu. And he tried to go glove side on Blackwood, but the Sharks goaltender shut him down. It's the second time there's been a turnover by the Sharks in their own zone. Earlier it was Celebrini who lost an edge. That time again, so if Utah is able to keep providing pressure, put them under duress. We're going to continue to force those turnovers. Kellerman. It's stapled up against the glass by CeCe in the far corner of the San Jose zone. Kellerman doing yeoman's work to try and keep this play alive here for Utah. Fighting off the 6'3", 210-pound CeCe from behind. Stenlin gets involved now for Utah. And there's Stenlin with some open space. Around for Kellerman behind the San Jose net. Milos Kellerman, mustache and all. Back up the near side wing. Linking up with, this is Ben McCartney. McCartney walks the puck along the blue line. Throws on the brakes at the right point. McCartney drops it back for Kolya Chona. Tight turn there by the Belarusian. This shot bounces off a body, goes behind the San Jose net. Physical play, that time courtesy of Jake Wallman. And here comes San Jose through center. Now it's to Foley, dropping it back. Celebrini in the high slot. Celebrini shoots, and a pad saved by Ingram. He had William Eklund menacing on this near post. Puck in front, taken by Kraus of Utah, and he accelerates this to center. Here comes Utah across the line. Kraus right circle. Now Matias Michelli had to fight through a stick check. That shot blocked in front. Doan hustling after it. Got knocked down. No penalty. We continue on. And it's taken by Toffoli in his own zone. He clears it just past the outstretched fingertips of Sean Dursey, who got just enough of that puck to knock it down and allow Utah to re-enter. Kraus to the tape of Doan. High slot. Doan lost the handle on it. It was poked away by the Sharks. And this is Scott Sabrin snapping it up ahead. Gunstrom with a sharp shot up high, and Ingram makes the save, pinning that puck up against his shoulder blade with 4.09 left in the first period. 0-0, shots are five apiece between Utah and San Jose, but none of them have found the back of the net. We'll finish up period one when we return on SEG Media.
409 left in the first 0-0 Utah and San Jose. They were just showing some images of concession food up on the video board, Nick, and that kind of reminded me of the special deals we got coming to Delta Center. Big announcement for the Utah Hockey Club and the Jazz as well. Fan-friendly concessions. You can get a box of popcorn for three bucks. Mike, when me? I saw this, I thought of one thing. We're very fortunate where we get a, a meal voucher being part of the media. $20, I am going to get six boxes of popcorn <laughs> because each of them are $3. And then just enough, I'll have just enough for a bottle of water to be able to wash it down. But you got to give all the credit in the world to Ryan and Ashley Smith with Smith Entertainment Group for putting something like this together about thinking about one thing, and that's the fans. Yeah. So when they can come to the game, they spend enough money of their hard-earned money to come to the games, but to be able to have an opportunity to buy food and to buy a lot of food, knowing that you're not going to go home hungry because things are more expensive, it's just an incredible initiative. Well, and you can empty your them. pockets and get a $3 hot dog, man, too. Man, you know? It's, it's, it's going to be an absolute feast for us every you can time you dig in go. your couch and get some ice cream. <laughs> Ratu with a shot here in the offensive zone. That gets blocked. Golia Chonuk sends it right back around the wheel. Agazino sparring for it, but it's taken by Benning of San Jose. Golia Chonuk with a good pinch. Kept it in the zone for the moment, but San Jose now is in full control, and the Sharks look to break out. So 0-0, now just over three minutes left in the first period. Haven't had a lot of whistles in this first frame, which is fine with us. Max Zuber deals this in behind Mackenzie Blackwood. Kolya Chona got past his man with authority that time to swing the puck back around to the near side. T.J. Ginla shoved from behind by the veteran defenseman Cody Cece. And this is freed up for Jake Wallman. Utah defensemen have been very aggressive here in the first period, pinching down any time they can. Got to make sure you have that third forward high in case the puck gets by. But that is another way to keep some persistent pressure in the offensive zone. Sergachev for Stenland, then into the offensive end. Ben McCartney, the first one there for Utah, stripped away by the Sharks, and an aerial flip arrives at center where Sergachev is waiting for it. Utah looking up the ice, and here is Mikhail Sergachev. Into the skates of Kevin Stenland. He gains the blue line with Kellerman. That shot blocked by San Jose. Then Kellerman knocks a man down. Dersey onto it, far side. Kellerman walks this in on the right circle, then had it stripped away by his counter number 21. That was Alexander Winberg. And it's back up the ice with Jack Thompson of San Jose and played in deep. Here's Sergachev up to Josh Doan, angled ahead for Matias Michelli, the 23-year-old Finn. Pass across, broken up by Celebrini. This is gloved down by uh, Maverick Lamaru, and we'll get a trip here. So Maverick Lamaru was called for a penalty earlier. He draws Sounds one here. 49 minor for tripping. And Utah will go to the power play with just over 100 seconds left in the first period. Mixing a little bit of baseball and hockey. Does Maverick Lamaru as he reaches high up into the air? Actually, no, the puck was right, right about, about at his knee. Gloves it, puts it down. That's the key there for a hockey player. You can't skate with the puck in your glove. When you get it, that's okay. You can close your hand on it, but then you have to drop the puck right away so you don't get called for a penalty. And Lamaru draws the penalty, but some real nice agility. That's the 12th year pro Scott Sabrin in the penalty box for San Jose. He gets called for the trip. Utah on the power play. They did connect once a couple nights ago against Colorado. Kyler Yamamoto just fumbled that puck and it leaks out of the zone. So Utah will have to reset. Looked like that disc just kind of rolled on him a bit. Sergachev from his own goal line looking to start the attack up the ice. Sergachev wanting the drop pass, but Barkley Goodrow is parked right behind him, preventing it. This is Keller across the line with Hayden. Barrett Hayden leaving it at the left point. Sergachev now and giving a return feed from Josh Doan. Utah starting to set the table here in the offensive end. Keller for Doan, then quickly swung across for Yamamoto. Yamamoto checked from behind by Matt Benning. Barrett Hayden steps into support. This is Keller, far side hash marks. Sergachev to Keller. And now a quick play in front for Doan in the bumper spot. Back out to Keller. Sergachev straight away. Keller looks in. Doan to Keller. Shot blocked and then cleared by San Jose. A lot of quick puck movement by San or by Utah, but nobody wanted to pull the trigger until Keller just let one rip. And I think a couple of passes, too, that were not in the wheelhouse, especially from Sergachev to Keller towards the skate, not allowing him to one time. Dursey wheeling and dealing in the offensive end as Utah gets set up once again. This is Michelli. 
at the left faceoff dot now Dursey surveying and then misfired on the pass to Michelli. Getting back to it was Stenland, but his pass was broken up by Carl Gunstrom, who winds up and slams this all the way down. Yeah, there's some of the early season rust that's trying to get kicked off for Utah after some passing that has not been as accurate as needed to be able to move the puck quickly. 0-0 zero, zero. after one. We'll have 19 more seconds on the power play timer for Utah when we come back for period number two. Still no score. Utah on the man advantage. Had some opportunities and some good puck movement there, Nick, but nothing too threatening. And so we'll start the second period with a clean surface and a little bit of power play time. Just maybe enough to get that group out there and get one zone entry at least. Yeah, and... Some good movement there on the power play for Utah. But as I had mentioned, just some of the passes in the skates. And it's amazing how one pass that is out of the reach or not in the wheelhouse of the intended target can really throw everything off. So I think special teams wise on the penalty kill was very good. Kept everything to the outside, stayed very sound structurally in the middle of the ice, but power play, they're still gonna have 19 seconds left, so if they can find a way to win the draw to start the second period, find a way to get in the zone, maybe you can have a rush and a couple of seconds of in-zone time. We think we're gonna be joined by Kevin Stenland here coming up in uh, just a moment. Stenland, of course, last year was a Stanley Cup champion with the Florida Panthers, a big part of Paul Maurice's group, part of that uh, intense forward bottom six that did such a good job at pressuring the puck and was relentless on the forecheck. Yeah, look, he's going to be huge for the group this year, especially at the face-off dot and the penalty kill. Kevin, this is Mike and Nick up in the radio booth. Are you able to uh, to hear us here? Yep, yeah, here good. What was that first period like? Not a lot of whistles. Felt like it had some pretty good flow for you guys. Yeah, I think it was a good period. Uh, a lot of back and forth, but I think uh, our forecheck was good. Uh, we just got to keep that going. Kevin, you were a huge fixture on the penalty kill for the Florida Panthers last season. I know there's a lot, and we could probably talk all day about what goes into penalty killing, but maybe can you take our viewers and our listeners into when do you know when to pressure in the defensive zone on the PK? Well, I mean, there's a lot of situations. Uh, first off, you got got to win the faceoff, uh, and then you have to clear. Uh, but there's pressure situations when they fumble the puck or, or after a shot or stuff like that. So. Uh, we, we try to do hard, high pressure, so uh, whenever you can, you, you got to go. Kevin, thank you, and good luck the rest of the way. Appreciate it. Thank you. That was Kevin Stenlin, the sixth-year man out of Sweden. We will be back for more in our first intermission here in just a moment. 0-0 between Utah and San Jose on SCG Media.
Thanks for joining us here on SCG Media. Mike Fulton and Nick Olchek from high in the rafters we are at the SAP Center. This is actually a load-bearing beam here yeah. behind us, so uh, we can't nudge that. But it's a 0-0 game. Utah will be on the power play for 19 more seconds, Nick, when we come back for the second period. But maybe the thing that stood out the most in that first was the PK. That's keeping right. San Jose off the board. And look, it's about pressure, just like Kevin Stenlin, who was kind enough to join us there in the intermission just a couple of minutes ago comes down to pressure in the defensive zone. And there's a lot of different ways to play the penalty kill. Some teams are a little bit more passive. They're going to sit back. They're going to worry about blocking shots. They're going to hold their shape. Yeah. Most penalty kills, you look to go for a diamond formation where you've got the one penalty killer up top surveying as a puck goes side to side. you got two on either side that kind of jet out. And when the puck goes to the flank, then they can attack. And you have that kind of defenseman that stays at the net. Sometimes you do more of a box where you got two defensemen at the net and two forwards up top. But I think having a guy like Kevin Stenlin, who's not just experienced, but is a great penalty killer, he's going to be able to read those pressure points when a puck is bobbled, when there's a bad pass, or when an offensive player turns their back because maybe the puck is flubbing, but also at the faceoff dot too. That is so crucial. If you can win that first faceoff and clear it all the way down, in some cases you're going to be able to kill off 25 or 30 seconds. So that is going to be something that is going to have to get better on this roster this year, that being the penalty kill. Because oftentimes, especially when we get to the end of the season, special teams are absolutely vital. 0-0 zero, zero between Utah and San Jose. We have more coming up in our first intermission report here. So stay with us on SEG Media. of this power play for Utah into the second period. Utah had some good puck movement, which we've seen a lot of in this preseason. On the last sequence, it felt like it was a game of hot potato. Nobody quite wanted to send one on net. But then Keller ended up taking a shot. It got blocked, and Utah had to reset things. But what have you seen from the power play so far in the preseason, Nick, that has converted five times through the previous four games? Yeah, look, 
in the early goings, I think it's easy to fall into the trap of trying to overpass, and for lack of a better phrase, try and pass the puck over the goal line. Right. And I think in the most recent part of the power play, the beginning, is that Utah was trying to pass the puck, yes, but the plays that the passes they were making into the skates, out of the wheelhouse of a potential shooter for a one-timer position. So, and that rust is gonna was gonna work itself off. And as the preseason goes along, still two more games after this. But um, these are the things that are gonna have to be fine-tuned come opening night, and no question that they will. But it's just easy for power plays to fall into trying to pass the puck, pass the puck. But the reality is, is that if you shoot it, you have a shoot-first mentality. Not only will you keep the penalty killers on guard not knowing whether you're going to pass or you're going to shoot, but same thing for the goaltender as well. So it's kind of like a, an offense in football where if all you do is run the ball, the defense is only going to respect that. And they're never going to respect guy, the Nick. pass. Not really, to be honest, but I'm trying to use <laughs> some terms that maybe our other fans would, would know. But that, that just has to be the thing, is to yeah. be able to be a dual threat and execute on the passes and making sure that you're ready to make that next play. Those are the important things in terms of being on the power play and something that Utah is going to continue to get better at. One thing that's interesting to me, we can touch on later, Josh Doan in that bumper spot. What will he be able to do and, yeah. and be able to bring in the next yeah. few years? We are going to bring you more here in our first intermission in just a minute or so, so stay with us here on SCG Media. Period number two is rapidly approaching, but it's not quite here yet. Mike Fulta and Nick Golchek here with you in between periods one and two. We were touching on Josh Doan right before we cut yeah. to our last break. He's in that bumper spot. Nick, can you explain that and what he can do? Well, a little bit different from bumper cars, I will say, Mikey. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, on the power play, you got five skaters in a fully even shrank situation. Of course, there could be some power plays that are four on three, but we're just going to worry right now about five against four. The bumper roll is the player that kind of peruses the middle of the ice. You usually have the defenseman, which in this case would be Mikhail Sergachev at the top. You have players on either flank. You've got a player at the net front. So it's kind of like a diamond and plus one 
which should be Josh Stone right in the middle. And essentially his role is to help relieve pressure for the flanks. When a defenseman would move it to the flank to have that little bump play, so what they call it, the bump play to the middle, Doan could either one-time that puck if it's on the right side of the ice because he's a righty, or if it's on the left side, he could receive it, maybe make a backhand pass to the backside or give it right back. So that's just more of a release role, but also there's a lot of movement because you got to be able to support the puck. Takes a lot of brains, and Josh has it. That's why you were in the bumper spot, right, with all those brains? See, I learn something every day. Absolutely not. I'm going to bump myself out of here. <laughs> well, now that Professor Olchek is all wrapped up, we're just about ready to start period number two. So we'll get you that action here from the SAP Center momentarily on SEG Media. here at the SAP Center. Barrett Hayden at the draw to open things up. Mike Folta and Nick Olchek here with you on SCG Media. Period two begins now. San Jose with the puck. We are scoreless. After 20 minutes, we begin our middle chapter. There's a quick shot from Winberg that just barely missed that far post. That was a ripper from the blue line. Utah has the puck in their own. And here's Sean Dersey. Jersey wearing number 50 in his fourth year in the NHL. Sergachev cross. Hayden the one-timer, and that's stopped by Blackwood. Sabrin comes out of the penalty box. We're back to five on five. We were on a brief Utah power play there to start period number two. That, was, that lasted all of 19 seconds. Now we're at full strength. Both teams are 0 for 1 on the man advantage so far in a scoreless game. Clayton Keller flings one rink wide in his own zone. That exit pass was broken up, and here's San Jose at Celebrini with the puck on his stick in the corner. Eklund got muscled off the puck, and now Clayton Keller turns up ice. Keller had that pass knocked down. Hayton jumps right on it, glides across the blue line, filters one into the corner, and goes off to the bench on a change. Matt Benning hoists this to the blue line, but not much further. Ian Cole stops it there. Matias Michelli around for Lawson Krause, 63 to 67. This is the big 67 car of Lawson Krause, six foot four and all. That shot missed the net. Michelli with a follow-up try, and Blackwood got over to make a great save. Lamaru deals it back. Krause to the front of the cage. It bounces towards the right pad 
of Mackenzie Blackwood. And the former New Jersey Devil is able to pin it up against his right pillow. Well, something that's going to be extremely important for the Utah Hockey Club this season is to get their defensemen involved and activated from the blue line in the offensive zone, and we saw that there. You also had Lawson Kraus working his way up towards the blue line in the middle to be that three across option. Really hard for the defending team to cover, but a real nice shift there. We'll see if the fourth line can come out and try and get that momentum continued. Faceoff is down to our right in the attacking zone. This draw is won back by San Jose, and the teal-clad Sharks look to break out of their own backyard. Out to center, Colin Graff, former NCAA champion with Quinnipiac, number 51, got his stick on it. Puck in the Utah end as this is Will Smith flinging it along. Back behind the Utah net, a centering pass is stolen away by Utah, clear to the line and back out to center as the Sharks have to regroup. This is Will Smith, taken fourth overall two drafts ago. Now Tej Aginla had trouble handling a rolling puck that time. It's back on Aginla's tape as he walks across the blue line. Now out wide, Aginla shoots, rebound for Ratu. Blackwood makes another good save and a couple strong sequences there from the San Jose netminder as Utah makes a change. And now a whistle and a penalty has been called. I beg your pardon, this is an icing whistle against San Jose. Arm was up from the referee, but it's an icing call. It was cleared all the way down by the Sharks. And so this allows Utah to change, but not San Jose. The Sharks had to throw a couple of their players back on the bench. Well, a real nice play by T. Jaginla entering the zone. Quick little patience, step towards the outside, and just throw the puck at the net, and that's the key. You just got to have players going there and a real good look at the net front. Face-off win by Stenland in the attacking zone. Milos Kellerman shoved down and continues to possess the puck until finally San Jose gets a hold of it, and now the Sharks cleared out. We're two and a half minutes into the second period, still no score. We're at five on five. Ian Cole makes his way across the blue line. There's an interference penalty against Kellerman. He ran over Fabian Zetterland, and you cannot do that when your team has the puck especially when it's a couple of feet away, and that looked like a pretty yeah, obvious call. Two minutes interference. Well, for those who are Utah Jazz fans, and I'm sure there's a lot of them, hopefully a lot that are watching. This is one of the best examples of a pick gone a little bit too overboard here as Milos Kellerman is just trying to get in the way. You're but crossing sports tonight. Yeah, but this is outstanding. It's got to be a lot less abrupt than that. You can do it but you can't put the guy on his wallet. So I know what Kellerman's trying to do. He's trying to buy Ian Cole a little bit of time. The right idea, just a little bit too forceful. We'll see what the PK can do. Great, great comparison there, Professor. Thank you. It'd be like a moving screen in basketball. You know what? That's exactly right, Mike. Thanks for picking me up. Josh Doan gets this puck all the way down as Utah clears. We'll get three, now four fresh penalty killers on the ice for Utah. San Jose scrambling the Jets from their own end. Here comes Macklin Celebrini, number 71. Down the left wing, Celebrini to the front of the net, tipped wide by Zetterland. Fabian Zetterland had 24 goals last year. He almost had a preseason tally off the setup from Macklin Celebrini. Side of the cage here for Toffoli, then back up top. This is Jake Wallman. Little pitch and catch for San Jose around the perimeter. Celebrini runs it down, his pass broken up. Zetterland back onto a right circle. Now Celebrini. Looks in from the right dot. One-timer, and that's shouldered away by Connor Ingram. Just over a minute left on the power play. Utah cannot clear. Good stick there. That was broken up by Stenland and cleared out by Yamamoto. And Kevin Stenland was the man that we talked to last intermission about finding those pressure points, and that was a great stick. Denying a pass towards the middle of the ice, picked up a stick and heads back to the bench. Just over 40 seconds remaining in the power play. This is Will Smith almost cruising by everybody. He got forced out wide at the last moment by Kolya Chonuk. Now Luca Cayoni, pass across, Smith right circle. One more pass, and that was intended for Colin Gaff and broken up. Back to the line, San Jose keeps it in, then Baron Hayton steals it. And after the pilfer, Utah is able to kill some time and now clear it out. 
Shorthanded, this is Max Zuber, right circle. Zuber with a power move to the front, and he never got a shot on net, stripped at the last moment. That was a right idea there from Max Zuber, trying to create a little bit of offense while down a man, looking to put the puck under the stick of the defense. Just couldn't quite get the puck on the other side. Wenberg. And now Eklund on the far side with a pass right through the blue paint, back out the other wing. This is Kellerman who blew a tire coming out of the penalty box. That could have been a two-on-one. Utah will have to settle for a rim around here in the offensive zone. That gets past the, Sturg uh, past the stick of Sergachev and comes all the way down to the Utah end, but it will be icing against San Jose, not quite five minutes into the second period. And another good-looking penalty kill for Utah. Get that offensive chance from Max Zuber towards the end, but as far as in zone goes, everybody holding their structure, holding their water. Didn't allow too many cross seam passes for what the Sharks were trying to do. And defended the entry really well also, so the PK two for two tonight looking really strong. Well, former Shark Andrew Agazzino will take this draw for Utah. He won it back, but the Sharks spring out of the zone with it. Here comes Gaff. He dumps this in and goes off on a change. Ian Cole will retrieve. Maverick Lamaru could not find a passing recipient at center. This is tipped in by Utah. Blackwood handles the puck in the trapezoid behind the cage. Akuratu, shoulder down. Good check by Barkley Goodrow. High shot from TJ Ginla is covered up and stopped by Blackwood with 14.42 on our second period clock. It's a great example of the quick release from TJ Ginla just as he was getting closed down on. For those watching on Utah HC Plus, Teach is going to work himself from out of the picture into the picture. Hopefully we can see it here unless the camera stays pinned on the hit. That's the case, but he worked himself from a less dangerous area on the side of the ice where there were less players, and he skated all the way to the high slot, was able to get a pass and fired at the net. So that's what I talked about earlier and what we discussed is working to the puck, being an option for your line mates. That's just great work from Teach. He ended up with a shot on goal. Teej, of course, the son of Hockey Hall of Famer Jerome Aginla. And both appear to have that scoring touch. And him and his dad. Look out. Pass to the side of the net. Yamamoto tapped it off the pads of Blackwood. Rebound for San Jose. Sharks get to it. Almost turned it over. That's Barrett Hayden trying to bulldoze his way to the front of the net. It's still loose in the high slot. Now cleared out by the Sharks. Why don't you finish that shot on Aginla? Thanks, Mike. Uh, Really good little nugget coming into this game is that Tej and his dad became the sixth, the sixth father and son duo in NHL history to be picked within the top 15 picks of an NHL draft. Yeah. Pretty special, and you get the sense of how much that means to Tej, and you could only imagine how proud and happy his father Jerome is. Jerome was one of my favorite players growing up. Watched him a ton and. Pretty cool for us to be able to see Tej. And I'll tell you what, he's got that same mean streak. He's still got that same touch as his old man. And we just saw a really good scoring chance. A couple of really good ones for Utah. Barrett Hayden with some great work burrowing his way in. Now it's cleared out by San Jose. The Sharks were able to clear after an icing whistle. Up ahead comes Kellerman. He got a stick on it, so no icing here. Blackwood, the goaltender, taps it to the corner. Jake Wallman looks up ice. He was in Detroit most recently, Wallman. Now up ahead, it's Celebrini in the clear. He shoots, and a great save by Ingram with the blocker. And Celebrini goes hurtling into the corner boards, and he's slow to get back to his skates. Now he's up and appears to be no worse for the wear. But he took a hard hit into the wall there. Now it's Utah on the counterattack. Kellerman dragged and couldn't shoot it cleanly. Great move inside by McCartney. Then he got tied up. It's Maverick Lamaru right point. Shot gets blocked. And San Jose takes over in their own end. They get to center. Eklund is offside coming across the blue line. To Foldy was in ahead of the play with 13-13 left in the second period. Still scoreless between San Jose and Utah here in period two. Back for more on SCG Media.
We have a dad on the ice, number 67, Lawson Krause. Him and his wife, Claire, a little while ago, welcomed into the world their beautiful baby daughter, Isabel. But Lawson Krauss, a dad in more ways than one. He's also a dog dad. Ooh. Has a French bulldog named Butterpig. And yes, in case you're wondering, Butterpig has an Instagram account. Mm. I believe it's at Butterpig Krauss. And in the bio, it's 50% it's dog, 50% pig, 100% party. Huh. So that's, that's the French bulldog of Lawson Krauss out there, number 67. I'm sure we'll hear more from Butterpig throughout the year. This is Luca Chioni with a shot from the left point for San Jose that gets blocked on its way to Connor Ingram, who made a really good save a few moments ago before we cut to break on Macklin Celebrini. He is a really good in this game. Calm, cool, collected. 0-0 zero, zero contest so far as Utah steals it up ahead. It's Michelli through Kraus to Josh Doan. Shot to the front, just missed on the far post. Kraus was crashing the crease, but Doan shot missed everything just by inches. And Kraus headed to the net like dog on a bone. Almost was able to connect there on a great feed from Josh Doan. Fabian Zetterlund's shot missed wide. I see what you did there. That was excellent. They get an A+. Plus. That's what we refer to as a callback in this industry. Josh Doan with a sharp shot in tight on Blackwood trying to go short side. And now San Jose takes over once again. Oh, two great plays from Josh Doan on this shift. Almost an attempt at setup and a chance there. Zetterlin shoots. He wired it wide on the near side trying to pick the top left blocker corner on Connor Ingram. Now we're starting to get some scoring chances here in a 0-0 game with 12 to go in the second. Up ahead comes Colin Gaff. A tight turn across the blue line. He finds Zetterlin. That shot blocked by Sean Dursey. How many times have we said that in this preseason? Now Will Smith with a high drive. That missed the crossbar. And Ingram jumps out of the rebound off of the glass behind him to freeze play with 11.44 left in period two. Well, so much is talked about Sean Dursey's offense, and rightfully so. Coming off of a career season, most assists he's ever had. Games played, points, all of that good stuff. But to your point, Mike, he has been so impressive defensively in the preseason, especially blocking shots. That, that to me is the ultimate sacrifice for your teammates, to put your body on the line, especially in a preseason game, to block the shot. Allow your goaltender to not have to see it. This is Keller trying to squeeze his way across the line, but Cody Cece cut him off. Wallman. Pirouetting away from the forecheck of Kyler Yamamoto, and it was nearly turned over to Utah, but instead we'll have a penalty here against Utah. Wallman did just enough to fight off the forecheck and draw a penalty, and we'll get a tripping infraction, and it will be Yamamoto to the penalty Utah box. Utah minor penalty number 56, two minutes for tripping. Well, Kyler does everything right on this play. Everything. Great pressure. Forces the turnover, we're gonna get a nice look at it here. He's got the stick involved in Wallman. And he gets the, you know what? I think he just I, lost an edge. It does not look like it's a penalty. And, and so Kyler, who was pleading his case on his way to the box, I mean, I think he's the one that wins that case. He moved his stick to the outside of Wallman's turn, and it looked like Wallman just kind of fell down, yeah. trying to peel away from exactly. Yamamoto. It was kind of like when you're leaning against the wall and the wall gives out, of course you're going to fall down. So I think that was one of those cases for Wallman there, but we're going to continue to give all the credit in the world to Kyler Yamamoto, who I think has had a fantastic preseason. It's pressure like that, which is what you're looking for from him. Off, off the faceoff, it was Doan and Kraus who worked well to get the puck out and down. 20 seconds into this power play, the third of the game for San Jose in a 0-0 contest so far. Sharks have it back of goal. There's Celebrini who took a hard fall earlier. One-timer from Wallman missed everything high and wide. And it's flushed out of the zone by Maverick Lamoureux. And so we get four fresh penalty killers on the ice. 40 seconds gone by in the PP. Wallman. Meandering out to center. There's the drop pass. It's Will Smith with his wingman, Macklin Celebrini. Pass hopped off the tape of Smith, stolen by Barrett Hayton. He takes it to center ice. Hayton shorthanded from in front of his own bench, deposits this into the San Jose end. A really nice work off of the entry from Kevin Stenlin, upholding the blue line, not giving the Sharks any time or space. Now it's Celebrini to the front, and he wanted to Foley on the back door, but Tyler to Foley could not tap it in. Cajoni. Across to Zetterland. Fabian Zetterland, the Swede, back to Will Smith as he drifts in from the left circle with a shot that hit somebody in front, maybe got all the way through to Ingram. 
On that far wing, Celebrini backhands went all the way across the street to Will Smith. Now it's Zetterlin, his pass broken up and shorthanded. It's a two on one. Here comes Michelli across with Kelman, and that shot was stopped by a sliding Mackenzie Blackwood. Maybe his best save of the night with the pads that time. Back in the Utah zone, Vlad Kolyachonuk almost lost the puck in front of his own goaltender. Now it's Lawson Kraus on his backhand right to the front once more shorthanded. That time, Josh Doan was tied up. No shot attempt as San Jose gets this out to center. Penalty time is now over. Yamamoto is set free from the penalty box, and we're back to five on five. This PK is three for three. 0-0 zero, zero with just over nine to go in the second period. Wenberg was shoved up against the glass by Ian Cole as San Jose enters the offensive zone. That's Podorowski on that far side playing bumper cars with Kraus. High slap shot is gobbled up by Connor Ingram. 9.03 to go in the second period. We are looking for our first goal here at the SAP Center. We'll be back in a few short moments here on SCG Media. Don't go anywhere. Nine to go here in the second period, 0-0 between Utah and San Jose. Nick, a lot of our friends watching and listening back home don't realize it, but you've had between six and eight hot dogs since we've been up here, uh -huh. which normally would cost a fan a lot of money, yep. but for here in the press box, they're free. Yep. And at the Delta Center, they're basically going to be free. Yep. There's a shot that missed the blocker of... Connor Ingram down to the Utah zone. This is Mikhail Sergachev in the corner, swinging it along. Kyler Yamamoto recently penalized and recently released in a four-car pileup with a couple of onlookers. Eventually, it comes out to Mario Ferraro as San Jose works the puck around the blue line. Ferraro down to the side of the net. Now Carl Gunstrom gets forced off the puck. Good strong play by Dersey, but Luke Cunnan maintains control. Around to the far side for Barkley Goodrow and then Gunstrom. Trying to work his way past Yamamoto. Puck in the far corner on that right side. Down to our left. It comes out to center after hopping one of the shark sticks. All the way back down for McKenzie Blackwood. He'll handle it himself. Utah getting in on the forecheck against Gunstrom and company. On this near side wall, that's Ian Cole who pinches down. You've been talking about how aggressive the defense has been, Nick. Here's another good example. And a great read there from Ian Cole. He had to go 100%, and it was a one-on-two, and he won the battle. This is Tej Aginla now, the 18-year-old. Back out to the blue line, his pass broken up, and it's forced out to center as Aginla recalibrates in his own end. Andrew Agazzino walks across the line with Aginla. Aginla in the high slot, just lost the handle there, and this is San Jose through the middle of the ice. Up ahead comes William Eklund as he powers his way across that left circle. Tried to drop it back for Toffoli. Eklund still on it. Right circle. One-timer. They score! San Jose takes the lead. It's Matt Benning. A slap shot from the middle of the blue line. Starts the scoring with 7.27 remaining in the second period. 
was the turnover off the rush by Utah. And TJ Ginla trying to make a creative play, bursting his way to the middle. I think in that case, you're better off just either shooting the puck or keeping it going north and low in the offensive zone. Puck is turned over. Here comes San Jose back the other way. Eklund makes a play to stay with it. He puts the puck right on a tee for Benning, who pile drives this one. Blocker side on Connor Ingram. San Jose hungry for more. Puck right in front and swooping into the rescue is Milos Kellerman. Kellerman down the left wing had it chopped away by Cajoni and it's all the way back down into the San Jose end. 1-0 our score. Puck at center. Vacuuming it in was Kellerman, but it's back with the Sharks yet once more here. Feels like every time Utah gets possession just for a moment, San Jose is there to strip it away. Case in point, McCartney had the puck relieved of his possession. This is Zetterlund with a shot that gets blocked all the way back down to the Sharks zone. So Benning from Eklund and Podorowski. Matt Benning was with San Jose last year, had one goal in 77 games. In the high slot, Wenberg passes it across. Cunnan tried to sneak that through the blue paint, but Ingram was well out to challenge him. Back up top for Wallman, who nearly lost it and has to wrap it around the wall. This is down to our left in the Utah zone. Wallman's pass broken up by Lawson Kraus. That's sticked down by Shaw Dersey in his near side corner. Wenberg trying to peel it off that yellow kick plate. And eventually it comes out to Utah, who supported that play well in the corner. And this is Matias Michelli. Firing a pass across to Kraus on his backhand. Kraus with a backhanded pass to Doan. Doan gets taken down right in front for Kraus, and the shot went behind the net. Michelli pass all the way back out to center. Looked like it bounced off the stick of Luke Cunnan, and Utah will have to regroup after a line change. Yeah, good to see Josh Doan okay. He went pretty hard into the boards there. Feet first, was able to get his knees tucked to help lessen the blow. Ian Cole swings this in around the glass. Puck in the offensive zone for Utah. Barrett Hayden was ambushed one on four, but then it's stolen back. Here's Clayton Keller, right circle. Keller back door, and Yamamoto angled it off the pipe. Shot from the left point by Zuber was blocked. This is Barrett Hayden behind the cage. Now angled up top to Cole. He lost it, and look out. Here comes Sabrin one on one with Keller. Scott Sabrin dragging, and he pushed it wide. Keller was the lone man back of forward trying to skate backwards. That's always a little tricky, but he marked Sabrin well and cut off the angle. Now it's Keller on the other end. Keller pulling up in the corner and moving it around to the near side for Barrett Hayden. He got belted up against the glass by Sabrin. Ferraro fending off the forecheck of Aku Ratti, Ratu as San Jose breaks it up through the middle of the ice, now into the Utah zone. Podorowski spinning off the check of Lamaru. Ratu in there. And the 6-6 Maverick Lamaru eventually wrangles it in. And San Jose waves the white flag and goes off on a change. Nice recognition, too, there from Lamaru to be able to hold on to the puck, realizing he had tired line mates on the ice. Let them change, get fresh bodies on. Real nice patience with the puck in the defensive zone. Now another one-on-one -on -one for Toffoli with a shot that just missed on the glove side. Maybe Ingram got a piece of it. Looked to me like he did with the glove. Now Toffoli steals the puck in the Utah zone. Back up top for Benning, the goal scorer. Toffoli pass across, shot by Will Smith off the iron. It clanged off this near post, and it wouldn't go in. Ingram didn't have to make a save. It's all the way back out to center, but Will Smith re-enters. He drops it back. This is Eklund with another shot. That one rang off the post, and then the crossbar. Some heavy metal here from the Sharks. Buck on this near side half wall is... Dersey delivers a check to Colin Gaff. Gaff with a backhander across the blue paint. Boy, the Sharks are just peppering Connor Ingram right now. And the red crossbar. Wallman backhands it to an open space for Zetterlin moving in. Pass to the middle, broken up by Sergachev. Utah is in a bit of disarray right now with three and a half to go in the second period. Milos Kellerman bangs his way down the near wall at the right point. That was... Sergachev, who got a stick on it, and it comes back out to Ian Cole. Sergachev wanted the quick up for Stenland, but it was too far. Icing is called. Well, a huge reason, Mike, for all those chances for San Jose is that both Sean Dersey and Maverick Lambert were trapped on the ice for close to two minutes. And they just had cement legs. They, they couldn't move at all. And the San Jose Sharks having their way both in zone and off the rush. 
But the post, and to your credit, the crossbar as well, the goaltender's best friend coming through to save the day. Yeah, we had two pings of that medal within the span of about 30 seconds. I heard a dong, too. One went there. off the post, and then one shot went off the post, and then the crossbar. Three to go here in period two. San Jose leading 1-0. Matt Benning has the game's only goal. We have 30 total shots in this game. We have not lacked for scoring chances. Especially in the second period. This is Goodrow surfing in down the wing. He shoots into the rib cage of the goaltender Ingram. And now there's a scrum behind the Utah net. Jersey, Cole, and Kraus are all involved. And our linesmen are forced to break it up. That's Mitch Hunt and Trent Knorr, our two lines people who have to separate the bodies. Back behind Connor Ingram. Just a hard play from Ian Cole. This is exactly what you're looking for from him. Finish your checks. Keep the attackers away from Connor Ingram. Love that play from Ian Cole. I'm sure Barkley Goodrow was just checking up on his good friend Lawson Krause. 2.47 left in the second period. 1-0 is our score. We will step away and then finish the second when we return here on SEG Media. Forty-seven, still left here in period number two. Mike Folta and Nick Olchek, we are your co-pilots here tonight. Yeah, that's staying good. Hydrated, folks. Uh, you've been staying hungry as well. We yeah. touched on the concessions earlier. We yeah. bring that up because it's going to be exciting to go to games at Delta Center this year and uh -huh. have such affordable options. That's right, and that's uh, an incredible investment into the team. Ryan and Ashley Smith with Smith Entertainment Group, just putting fans first. You think about community obsessed, being all in. It's one thing to say it, and it's another thing to follow through with things like fan-friendly concessions. So this is going to be incredible for people to come hungry, leave satisfied. And uh, we can't credit enough Ryan and Ashley Smith for the incredible job that they've done to be able to continue to put Utahns first. Ice cream, popcorn, and hot dogs, three bucks. I mean, those, those are like 1960s prices. And right don't there. forget, <laughs> staying hydrated. That's right. Dasani bottled water, not $1, not $3, not $10 like you'll find in some arenas around the world. I've even seen it for $12. They should Two give you bucks. an ad deal. $2 to stay hydrated and wash the popcorn, nachos, hot dogs, and ice cream down. I plan to be doing all that. Not necessarily in that order, though. <laughs> well, we know that you like to keep it trim. This is... Michelli across the line for Utah with a shot that got blocked. We have under two minutes left in the second period. 1-0 San Jose leading Utah. Matt Benning has the game's only score. Yamamoto leaving it for Hayton. Yamamoto really took a hard shoulder there to try and keep that puck alive. Keller with a one-time blast that was fought off by Blackwood with the glove. Back out at center. It's taken by San Jose. This is Tyler Toffoli, a high shot blocker out of the air by, uh, by Connor Ingram. This is Barrett Hayden. Giveaway to Will Smith of San Jose, and this puck comes back out to center. Good thing for Utah. 
And then Keller got tripped up. That's a blatant call delayed penalty here against San Jose. And Utah will be heading to the power play with 109 left in the second period. San Jose minor penalty number 72, two minutes for tripping. That's William Eklund, the youngster entering his second full NHL season. He will sit in the penalty box after he tripped up Clayton Keller back in the Utah zone. And Keller had a great look in the offensive zone on a one-timer situation out in front of that. I mean, that's just the elusiveness of Keller to be able to sidestep, push the puck away, and accelerate all in a span of two or three strides, two or three steps. And that's the agility that he possesses in the offensive zone, of course, there in the D zone as well. And now we'll see what the power play can do for Utah. So power play time for Utah. It's their second of the game. one nothing the score. This power play could bleed over into the third period. Stenland at the faceoff. And there's a chance he could try and just win the draw and then head back to the bench. Now he's kicked off the dot, and so Lawson Krause steps in, and this is one back by San Jose, and the Sharks clear it out. It's Dersey on the ice with Krause, Iginla, Michelli, and Stenlin. Those are the five. Less than a minute remaining in period two. one nothing to score. Utah a man up. Michelli weaves his way across the blue line. There's Kevin Stenland here on the near side, thrown up against the wall. Good support from Kraus to keep it alive for Michelli. He wanders past the slot. One-timer, Kraus. It was stopped in front by a body. Then again, it goes crashing into the glass. Ferraro was riding him from behind. Dersey reverses the flow to Stenland. And again, it gets involved to feed it back to Dersey along the blue line. There's a shot by Matias Michelli, blocked in front. Kraus, and then quickly for Aguila with a shot that was blocked as well. The Sharks pack in the paint, 15 seconds left in the period. On the far side, back up top, straightaway Jersey. Wrist shot, they score! Utah stashes one in on the power play. Jersey had the shot. It looked like it was tipped on its way in, and we are tied at one with 10 seconds left in the second period. The movement for Utah, not exactly a ton of connected passes, but a real nice play from Matias Michelli, putting it right onto the stick of Dersey, sends it towards the net. You've got a screen there from Tej Aginla, and the power play is able to come through in a big way for Utah, but a lot of broken plays. Really never got things perfectly set. But all you got to find a way to do is keep possession in the offensive zone. Jersey gets his shot through, and we're tied in the second. So a goal coming with 10 seconds left in the frame, and after a second period in which it felt like San Jose had a few more scoring chances, Utah is able to tie things up. Matt Benning had the first goal for the Sharks, and then it's Sean Jersey's goal, a power play strike on a slap shot from the high slot, and we are locked up at one apiece. The sixth power play goal of this preseason. Yeah, that's been a real strength of, of this team. And I think moving forward this year, that's going to have to continue to be the case because uh, the power play really can be the difference between winning and losing games, especially as you go towards the end of the season. And to have a guy like Sean Dursey who's coming off of a career season, it's going to be extremely impactful on the power play, whether which unit he's on, mixing up time with him and Mikhail Sergachev running each power play. I think we got a real good look at it there. And, and as a defenseman in that spot, you got to take the shot when it's there, but also it's up to you to be able to feed the flanks and make sure that those are accurate passes so that way that player could be able to one-time it right away. But a real nice uh, shot there from Dersey getting it through, reading the flash screen from TJ Ginla. And the power play is able to come through and tie it late. Nine goals for Sean Dersey last year with the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, a huge year, as you were saying earlier, career highs in pretty much every statistical category. He's hoping for another big year here with Utah to take that next step. We've seen his offensive game. We've, we've seen the blocked shots yeah. as well. He's just kind of a do-it-all Swiss Army knife out He's there. He's going to be a very valuable part of the team this year. and Looks like we're going to get a chance to chat with him now. Sean, this is Mike and Nick here in the radio booth. You got us? Yeah, how's it going, guys? Ten seconds left in the period. What was that sequence like for you guys out there on the goal, and were you looking up at the clock at all during that? I mean, I looked up. I knew there was a minute of uh, the period left, so we weren't going to get the hole two if we hummed them in. Um, 
you know what, some good pressure, some good puck recoveries, uh, a lot of good talk. I don't know if you guys can hear it up in the booth, but uh, just just a bunch of good plays strung together, and I just threw under the net. Sean, you get a ton of credit for your offensive game, and that's earned and rightfully so, but you take a lot of pride in the defensive game as well, I would assume. We've seen you block about a million shots so far in the preseason. Can you tell us how important the defensive side is for you, though you are so potent on the offensive side? Yeah, listen, a big part of my game is just taking pride and, and you know, playing both ways of the puck. Um, you know, preseason's all about timing and, you know, find your game, getting ready for the regular season. So I think just getting my timing on a few of those blocks is, uh, like I said, a big part of my game and, you know, happy to feel a few hit me. Coming off a career year last year, Sean, where's your confidence at heading into this season with this new team? Yeah, I think uh, all of our confidence has to be, you know, high this year. Um, we all got to play with a, a type of swagger that's, you know, going to win us some hockey games. Obviously, uh, we start doing things the right way, it's going to grow, but... Um, coming into the year, you, you try to keep it even keel, uh, keep that confidence where you can make plays, but you got to play the right way and uh, go from there. Sean, thanks for the time. Good luck the rest of the way. Yeah, Mike, Nick, thank you, guys. That was Sean Dursey, the pride of Mississauga, Ontario. We appreciate him for what stopping by. We appreciate his scoring as well, along with the shot block. But it's one-to-one, -one, thanks to Dursey's efforts. We are tied between Utah and San Jose. We'll get you more of our second intermission when we come back here on SEG Media. Mike Folta and Nick Olchek here at our second intermission report at the SAP Center. One to one, thanks to Sean Dursey's power play goal with 10 seconds left in that middle frame. Nick, uh, special teams goal for Utah. That's been yeah. kind of a common theme here in the preseason. And you can only count on special teams for so much. But we've seen some good scoring chances for both sides throughout this game. Sean Dursey, though, we've talked about him a lot today, but there's a reason for it. He has been very impactful in this game this evening, but also he's going to be a huge piece for this team. You talk about a huge piece for this team moving forward. Recently signed a four-year deal with the organization to be in Utah for a long time to come. And for those who were tuning in to listen to the interview, such an easy guy to root for, yeah. right? Plays the game the right way, 
He plays hard. He's unbelievably respected by his teammates. You talk to any of the other guys in the room, the coaching staff, the equipment guys, the training staff, you love to play for this guy. You love to talk about this guy because he knows how to play the game and he doesn't cheat. And that's the one thing is you get some offensive players, whether it be D or forwards, that they cheat. Maybe they're going to get out of the way of blocking the shot because it's the preseason, right? Chandra's is going to go in and he's going to do a trial by fire. And he's going to try to play these preseason games as he would play a regular season game. And to me, you can talk all you want, but if you're going to walk the walk, you got to lead by example. And he has done that since day one. One to one after Jersey's power play goal. We will return for more analysis here in our second intermission report on SEG Media. Here in between periods two and three at SAP Center, Mike Fulta and Nick Olchek here with you providing the tones this evening. One guy who's been very noticeable and the one who kind of ignited that power play by drawing the penalty that eventually led to the Sean Jersey goal has been Clayton Keller. He's going to be one of the talk, top dogs, if not the top dog for Utah this season. You'll be watching a lot of number nine out there on that top line, likely with Nick Schmaltz. But he's been noticeable here tonight as well. well. Look, he's the creator in chief for this team, especially in the, on the offensive side. And for those of our great fans who may not know, you think back of March in 2022 where Clayton broke his femur yeah. in a game. Six months of rehab, came back the next season, played all 82 games, set a career high with 89 points and a career high with 37 goals. So you talk about perseverance and dedication and relentlessness to get better and to get back and to get healthy. I think that tells you everything you need yeah. to know about Clayton. So the skill, the talent, the ability, that's all there. But I remember seeing an interview when he was asked about it, said he was most challenged by what's between the ears. And this is a kid that's mentally strong and has been through probably the most horrific thing you could possibly do as a hockey player in yeah. terms of injury within a game. So he's a leader on this team. And great to see him having a nice impact so far coming off a game last game 
where he had a goal and two assists, picking up right where he left off. I know he hasn't had a point in this game, but you know, he's going to be yeah. one of those guys moving forward. That's extremely that, important. That femur is the biggest bone in your body. Yeah. That's a tough and painful rehab. And, yeah. you know, he said in interviews, you, you find a lot out about your body and about yourself when you're coming back from something like that. But in that follow-up season, 86 points, a career high for him. You know whose record, single-season Arizona Coyotes record he tied? His old coach, Keith Kachuk. Yeah. So a little tie-in that we had back in the first period. Uh, stay tuned for more tie-ins throughout the game as well. We also have third period coming up in a one-to-one -one hockey game. That should be plenty of fun as well. We'll be back for more in just a bit here on SCG Media. Welcome back to our office that you can see here at SAP Center. We got the uh, the cubicles around us. We have our office supplies. And we've got a one-to-one -one hockey game here in between periods two and three. Nick, some things to clean up for Utah heading into the third. Yeah, I think especially in terms of passing. It's been one thing that uh, Utah has struggled with. You could probably say the case for, for both teams in this game. Still very much preseason, trying to wipe the rust off. Got to get some WD-40 on the sticks down there to try and get the passes to be... <laughs> A little bit accurate, uh, but I think structure-wise, it's been fine. Effort-wise, has been good. But going into this third period, I'd like to see the execution get a little bit better, especially the breakouts. And then once Utah is able to get set in zone, spreading out, but making sure that you're supporting the puck carrier when you're able to get there, be an option for him, win the puck back, and a little bit more of a net front presence, I think, is going to help this team take the lead. Yeah, no doubt. We've seen a lot of Clayton Keller. We were touching on him in that last segment. You have to think that with more NHL guys in the lineup in these later preseason games, it's going to be more ice time for those guys as they get used to playing in these clutch moments. Well, that's going to have to be the case, and you're continuing to get the chemistry up from where it's going. And from year to year, things are really never going to carry over, but there's always those players that like to play with certain players. You think about a Keller and a Schmaltz. Nick Schmaltz not playing tonight, but these are going to be the guys that are going to be big players moving forward. See if they can continue to get their reactions right. One to one when we come back here in San Jose.
Third period action from the SAP Center here in San Jose, California. Utah moving right to left in a one-to-one -one hockey game. Glad you're with us on SCG Media. However you may be joining us, whether that's on Utah HC Plus or it's on KSL Sports Zone and our radio footprint, thank you for tuning in here tonight. Or the NHL app as well. We welcome all who have bellied up to this feast of hockey this evening. Or SEG Plus, That's where right. you get both Jazz Plus and Utah HC Plus. It's a heck of a deal to be able to get your fix of basketball and hot. We're nine seconds into period number three, and here comes Utah with their top line attacking up the ice. Hayden throws it across to Sergachev, right back across to Clayton Keller. That pass had some steam on it. Keller with the puck back behind the San Jose net. Jersey lost that pass in his skates. And here comes San Jose with one of their youngsters, Will Smith, down the left flank. Smith button hooks, then hits to Foley. To Foley with a pass across. Maybe a shot. I thought he was going back door with it. That just missed the far post by inches. Smith wanted to return to Eklund on the near post. And that one didn't connect. And Utah gets it out to center. Some near misses, but we're still tied at 1-1. A couple of close calls there for the San Jose Sharks as Utah a little bit scrambling to be able to get back in position. Sean Dersey was caught up the ice trying to keep the play alive. A note from the San Jose Sharks Public Relations Department. Macklin Celebrini, the first overall pick in this most recent draft, will not return tonight with a lower body injury. We saw him crash into the wall hard, and he was slow to get up earlier. They're being extra cautious with him, no doubt, and he is less than 100%, so they're going to have him sit out the rest of the third. This is Michelli back behind the San Jose net. Matias Michelli right in front for Doan. Save, rebound. Kraus sent it behind the cage wide. Kraus was the third Utah skater in, and he just zipped it past the blocker of Mackenzie Blackwood wide on this near post. Both teams make changes. Utah recalibrates. Not quite two minutes into period number three. Both sides have had some good scoring chances. T.J. Ginnela maybe had a breakaway chance splitting the defense, but instead he lost an edge right in the high slot. So now the puck's in the corner down to our left in the San Jose end. Wrist shot from Lamaru was blocked. In that far corner, the Sharks take over with Cunnan, and he's able to punch that out to center. Here comes San Jose with Podorowski. He picked up an assist earlier. Agazino had that puck hit his backside. This is Vlad Kolgachonik. Up ahead, Akuratu hands it off to Tej Ginla, who tried to pull the string on Will Smith. Instead, this comes out to center, and it's dumped in by Utah on net. And that time it worked out for Tej, where Kale Sergachev was able to back him up. But that's one of those plays as a young player. You maybe try to do a little bit too much. Those are going to work in junior, but at the National Hockey League level, 
Better just keep that puck going north. Milos Kalaman back of goal for Utah, fending off a shark from behind. Goes low to high for Dursey. High, wrist shot, missed everything. A battle for the rebound ensues. It's Kevin Stenlin onto it in the corner. Now Mikhail Sergachev, wrist shot, blocked in front, and the loose puck is taken by Carl Gunstrom of San Jose, and he's able to find some open space. Three minutes gone by in the third. Utah with possession. This is Clayton Keller starting out from his own end. There's Kyler Yamamoto as he squeezes across the blue line on that far side. Baron Hayden overstated it. And now back the other way. This is William Eklund. Eklund with a pass to Matt Benning who shoots off a stick behind the Utah cage. Puck in front. Benning spun around but somehow got a handle on it. And Max Zuber for Utah flips it to the opposite corner. That's a safe space, and Ian Cole is able to hinge it out to center. Line change time for Utah. Five fresh tires. One of them, Josh Doan, number 91, bearing do down on Cajoni and almost forced a turnover. Cajoni soccers it over to the far side, and Doan gets his stick on it once again. Michelli twisting like a top in the corner as Lawson Krauss gets involved. Jack Thompson had some trouble with it. A lot of pressure by Utah right now in the offensive zone, but they couldn't get full possession. It comes back down to their own end. And it all started because of the initial pressure from Josh Doan. He, he did not force a turnover with his stick, but because of the work ethic to get up the ice, put Canyoni under pressure, and make him have to think, Canyoni coughed it up because of the mere pressure and the presence of Josh Doan. So it's that type of play of getting up the ice, working yourself into that position. And then look what happened. Utah had a couple of chances, especially with Matias Michelli. So, I mean, that's the type of play from Josh Doan that you're looking for. And I think he has had an outstanding camp so far to this point. It's plays like that that are going to have him on this roster. We just had an icing call against Utah. So here's Doan at the draw. Born in Scottsdale while his dad Shane was playing for the Arizona Coyotes. This is Lawson Kraus on the near side wall. And that pass bounces off the skate back down to the Sharks' end. Four and a half into the third, tied at one. Ferraro takes this down the near wing as San Jose looks to set things up offensively. Fabian Zetterlund with a shoulder on Mikhail Sergachev as those two battle for it. That's Colin Gaff. Spun around by Doan. Sergachev jams it back up the near wall. And it's thrown all the way across the rink. Again, Ginla forces that out to center. It's a smart play there from TJ Ginla. Nothing fancy. Just make the smart, simple, hard play to get the puck out into the neutral zone. Now the whistle goes. Faceoff will come out to the middle of the ice. But that's what you're looking for from TJ in the D zone. Just make the simple play. Don't overcomplicate it. Nice job there just outside of his blue line. Yeah, that puck, I believe, hit the curved glass there, Nick. I think on the, on the, the dump in yeah. from San Jose. Exactly. So they'll bring the face off right underneath the scoreboard here at SAP Center. And this draw is won by Andrew Agazzino after a hard fought battle. Dumped in by Utah. Ratu, the first one there against Cody Cece. Agazzino arrives on the scene, but this is off the glass and all the way down. San Jose has iced the puck. So there's the whistle. Face off coming right back down towards Mackenzie Blackwood. This line has had a good game. McGinley, Agazino, and Ratu. They've been around the puck. They've had offensive zone time. They force an icing, and head coach Andre Turney will come out with Stenlin, McCartney, and Kellerman and see what they can do. It'll be the Swede Stenlin at the draw. We talked to him earlier. In that first intermission, right after the first period, he's got that Swedish accent. You can hear the Stockholm in his voice. This comes all the way down to the Utah end. No icing here. Zuber, Ian Cole, and kept in by San Jose right to the front off the goal stick of the netminder, Connor Ingram. Zuber, born in Poland, raised in Germany, could not get it out of the zone, and now the big Zuber. 55 is able to tap it over to his D partner Cole out to center. That's too far. And there's no icing. Kevin Stenland racing back to negate the, the whistle. 
This is all the way back down towards Ingram in the Utah zone. So we do have an icing, but it's against San Jose. And so both teams take turns clearing at the length of the ice. A couple of icings now for San Jose in a row. And we'll see if Utah can find a way to win a draw, get a set faceoff play going as everyone is coming together here before the faceoff. Yamamoto, Keller. You've got Barrett Hayton out there too. They're all chatting to try and see if they can make a play happen. It'll be Keller at the faceoff in between Yamamoto and Keller. Hayton at the draw. This is the top group forward-wise for Utah. And, and there we just saw one of the new rules where you saw the referee put up his right arm and wave towards Barrett Hayton. Offensive centers can get warnings. A new rule in the National Hockey League this season. Keller comes out of the pile with it. Tried to float it back to the blue line, but it hopped over the line out to center. So Vlad Kolyachonuk retraces his steps into his own zone. Kolyachonuk up ahead to Keller. Kolyachonuk played five games with the Coyotes last year, was primarily in Tucson. Barrett Hayden right to the front, tapped in, and they score! Kyler Yamamoto stashes home the setup from Barrett Hayden, and it's 2-1. Utah has the lead. Well, I'll tell you what, if there's one guy that has deserved a goal, it is Kyler Yamamoto. Great play from Keller. Really nice support down low from Hayden, and he makes the quick little stick handle at the last second to open up that passing lane across the seam. And give a lot of kudos to Kyler Yamamoto, who busted his way to the back post, presented his stick as an option. Strong bottom hand to be able to redirect that puck into the back of the net all in one motion. Not allowing Blackwood to get across and make that stop. A great play all the way around. And Yamamoto with his first. That goal came at the 623 mark of the third period. Still about 13 and a half to go in regulation. Two to one our score. San Jose looking to counter, and that shot was blocked by Matias Michelli. And on the backhand, he shovels this out to neutral ice. Lawson Kraus across the blue line, but that's an offside whistle against Utah. And so we will step aside momentarily. But not before Kyler Yamamoto has given Utah the lead here at the SAP Center in San Jose. On SEG Media, it's 2-1. Utah now leads San Jose. The Utah Hockey Club has its first lead of the night. Kyler Yamamoto has the most recent goal of the game. He had eight last year with the Seattle Kraken. And now it's Josh Doan at the faceoff at neutral ice. Just over 13 minutes left in the third. 2-1 our score. This draw is won back by the youngster Will Smith. And San Jose dumps this in from the red line. Ingram. Stops it behind his own net here in the Utah zone. Up the wall, takes a bounce off a stick. Sergachev from the red line dumps this in. Good chance he will be the number one D-man for Utah this year. Mikhail Sergachev. Now it's Michelli across. Doan right to the front, and it was tapped wide. Doan wanted Kraus on that far post, it looked like, and Kraus was tied up with the defense of San Jose. That whole play started because of Connor Ingram in behind his own net. 
It was a hard dump in from the San Jose Sharks, but he got behind the net to stop it. Denied the four check for San Jose, began the breakout for Utah, and it ends up in that great chance. That good stick for Sergachev right there to prevent a Barclay Goodrow shot. Now it's Tej Ginla who is trying to dangle his way down that right flank, but then got forced back to center. Agazino flings this in from the left point. And that was a delayed offside whistle against Aku Ratu and company. So San Jose is allowed to touch that puck. Ian Cole almost lit up one of the San Jose forwards. That was Eklund on the far side. And if he really wanted to, he absolutely could have. We've already had some injuries in this game and in the preseason. No more Macklin Celebrini for the game. Got to be careful of that kind of stuff. You look all around the league, too. Mike yeah. Patrick Line hurt. Drew Doughty out for a couple of months with a fractured ankle. This is Wallman offering a shot well high and wide. And of course, that is never anybody's, anybody's goal to do that. But early in the season, sometimes those things happen. It's a heavy contact sport. It's the fastest game in the world. Eklund shoots. Save Ingram through some traffic there. Not sure if he was even able to see that. Kevin Stenlin. Circles in his own end as Utah tries to break this San Jose forecheck right now. Finally, it does come out to center. It's Kellerman who is there. And Milos Kellerman, the Slovak, gets it down. And to your point, too, Mike, a lot of people think that, oh, too many games in the preseason means the injuries. Well, I, I do think it's the... Can go the other way, too. I do think the preseason is still a couple of games too long, but these guys do need to be able to play games. So you look at some of the injuries, very freak plays, just like the William Nylander concussion. There's a lot of different injuries that have happened, but a lot of the freak variety, just like Drew Doughty going into the boards. Yeah. Accidentally, obviously, getting his foot lodged, fracturing his ankle. William Nylander getting pushed from behind from a teammate, Nick Robertson, to try and give him a little bit of a boost. And he ends up falling right into another player's knee, and he's out with a concussion. So I do think the preseason, I think five games would be great. But these guys do need to play, so that way come opening night, they're ready. It's not just like you can't just turn it on like a light switch. Utah is able to get this out to center, and it can be the other way, too, where if you don't have those preseason games and guys aren't ready, like you're saying, then that's another opportunity for injury right there, except that's in the regular season. This puck is in the San Jose zone. Down to our left is Sergachev links up with Keller, and then Yamamoto shoots, just missed. Keller back onto it in the corner. And now it's Barrett Hayden who get jostled from behind. Keller waiting for it to emerge from a pile. Looks like that puck is snowed under right now as Hayden got knocked down on the seat of his pants. Yamamoto's getting a rough ride from behind and bodies are crashing everywhere. Keller now assumes control and then lost the handle all but for a moment. Now he's trapped on the near side wall. Back up top, it's Sergachev looking in. Wrist shot, blocker saved by Blackwood. Loose in the corner, this is Yamamoto. Utah threatening, but San Jose is able to get a stick on it with Matt Benning, who has scored the lone Sharks goal, and it's cleared out by San Jose with less than 10 minutes remaining in the third, 2-1. Hard-working shift there. Clayton Keller, Kyler Yamamoto, and Barrett Hayton. Some good grinding work down low. Yamamoto had another real good look in the low slot. He's probably... I deserve two goals tonight. He's already got the one, and he's been finding himself around the net. This is Matias Michelli. This pass gets broken up by Ferraro. Gaff could not come across the line cleanly. It's a good check by Zuber, just totally erasing Barkley Goodrow that time. Lawson Kraus up ahead. His pass deflects. Now Josh Doan is in control. Doan finds Michelli. Italian sounding name, but. He was born in Finland. That shot went right through everybody and missed the ear of Blackwood High. Up ahead comes Fabian Zetterland of San Jose. That's an offside whistle with 8.58 left in the third. Two to one, Utah maintaining the lead given to them by Kyler Yamamoto. We'll be back for more in just a bit here at the SAP Center on SEG Media.
It's under nine to go here in the third, two to one. Utah leading San Jose. This is a new coaching staff for the Sharks. Ryan Worsowski in year number one as the bench boss. Also has a couple of new assistants. One of them, Doug Howda, actually played a little bit in Salt Lake City with the Utah Grizzlies back in the mid-90s. He played three games with the Utah Grizzlies when they were in the IHL. And that is our Utah hockey connection of the game. We're talking to some people around the Sharks organization there. Really happy with what Ryan Worsowski has been able to do with the young group. Shot on from Agazino ends up in the midsection of our goaltender tonight, Mackenzie Blackwood. And I would also say you got to give a, lot, a ton of credit to Andre Turini as well, right? Still a young group. It's all about teaching. And the one thing that we've seen being at practice, being at morning skates, is, is Andre is not afraid to blow the whistle dead during a drill. If it's not being done correctly or up to the standard of what he wants, to stop, everybody else stops, he asks questions, and the players are then able to figure out what they're supposed to do. So he holds them accountable, and there's a ton of teaching and developing, which is exactly what you want with a young group. And you gotta think a lot of that goes back to his days coaching a junior as well, being able to relate to this young core that Utah has. And that's what it is. You, 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 you gotta be able to have that relationship with the players and hold them accountable in the same vein. Lamaru walks the blue line and shoots one off a stick that went up into the stratosphere above the protective netting down into section 121. And it looks like a lucky Sharks fan is going to get a souvenir. And to, to finish up that point, Mike, it's not easy to get to that point where you got to be really brutally honest. But I think what wins him over with the players is that he's honest. And the players always know where they stand and they know that he's got the best interest and he's going to put him in the right positions to succeed. And you just watch him interact with the players, that being head coach Andre Turini, and there's a lot of love and a lot of discipline too, of course, but I think he gets his point across because of the great people person that he is. Fourth year as an NHL head coach for Andre Turini. Also spent 14 as a head coach in the major junior leagues as well. Coached a little bit with... Patrick Waugh in Colorado. Also coached, coached the World Junior Championship Team Canada last year, won gold. Great shot block there from Milos Kellerman. That gets some stick taps from the bench. He just dove in front of that drive from the left point. This puck comes down to the San Jose zone. It's 2-1 to one Utah with 7.5 left in the third. So now we'll see how they can play with the lead here. Getting late in the third period, this is where you got to simplify. You're not getting to the blue line and you're dipsy doodling and stick handling and trying to beat guys one on one. This is where you got to simplify, make hard plays to get out of the defensive zone. And it's also the five foot rule at both blue lines five feet inside the blue lines, five feet outside the blue lines. The puck has to get out at your blue line, and the puck has to get in at the offensive blue so you don't feed the transition one way or another for the San Jose Sharks. After a puck went into the Utah bench, a center ice faceoff, and this comes back down for Jack Thompson. Across to Mario Ferraro of San Jose, tipped in. Again, the Sharks are playing without the number one overall draft pick of this most recent draft, Macklin Celebrini, who was touted as the best ever prospect coming out of the college ranks. He is out with a lower body injury. There's a shot by Michelli. Sketchy save from Blackwood, and eventually San Jose gets to it. There was a rebound available for a moment. And it was Josh Doan who was driving the net. Looked like he had his stick tied up a little bit, but great to see number 91 heading to the net looking for some loose change. Now we have a penalty called. Hooking has been detected, and it's going to go against Utah. This will be against Matias Michelli with 6.52 left in the third, and so in a 2-1 to game, now we get to see this PK again. It's not a time in the game you want to see the PK, but the penalty kill has been very good for Utah here tonight. And they have looked very much cohesive with the pressure points, winning some important faceoffs. And speaking of that, we're going to see Kevin Stenland come out and take this draw, see if he can pull it back and have one of his teammates cleared all the way down. Penalty kill time for Utah. San Jose takes over on the man advantage. Wallman along the blue line for Will Smith trying to fight off Kyler Yamamoto, who has been everywhere here tonight. That's Eklund now back up top. Wallman this way for Zetterberg. Is, he's sent, or Zetterland rather, as he zips a shot high and it comes out to center. 
Jake Wallman dumps this in. Ingram couldn't stop it behind his own net. Eklund reverses the flow back around to the far side. That's Will Smith. Give and go with Wallman. Down to the corner. Eklund twisting and turning on Kolya Chona. Good stick there by the 6'6 Lamaru. He's the long arm of the law out there with that range. Zetterlund finds to Foley. He deals it back straight away. Wallman one timer off the side of the net. That came from Will Smith. It's clear to the line, but not out. Held in by Wallman. Maverick Lamaru to the puck in the corner for Utah. Kolya Chona keeps it moving, but didn't get much wood on the rubber. And so this stays in the offensive end for the Sharks. Penalty time is halfway over. Two to one lead for Utah. Eklund dancing in from the circle. One timer. Save made. Ingram. It's cleared out by Utah. That is a huge stop from Connor Ingram from point blank. After Utah had two chances to clear the puck, not able to do so. That's why your goaltender has to be your best penalty killer. Just over 30 seconds left in the penalty to Michelli. Cunning with a drive, and that looked like it went off the pads or maybe even the glove of Connor Ingram. This is cleared all the way down by Lawson Krause now. What a heads up play there for Ian Cole. Instead of keeping it going up the boards where there were bodies, he bumped it to the middle, able to get the clear. Podorowski winds his way to that far side as penalty time winds down here on San Jose. Cunnan changes the direction, and now it's Cunnan back of goal. Being worked on by Max Zuber. Stolen for a moment by Utah, and then Kraus got just enough of it to force it to center. Penalty time is over, and we return to five on five. This PK is four for four tonight for Utah. And that one, unlike others, had to rely on the guy in between the pipes, Connor Ingram, to make one big save, and another one from a shot from the flank. So far, Ingram has stopped 19 of 20. Hayden gains the line for Michelli. He looks in and shoots off the blocker of Blackwood. San Jose to the puck in their own zone. Here comes the breakout with Will Smith. Smith moving in, and he shoots it high and wide on the glove side of Ingram. Never hit the four by six. Centering feed, good stick by Sergachev to break that up. Clayton Keller lands it down for Michelli. Now it's Keller and Michelli across the line. Looks like Keller will just sprinkle this in and go off on a change. That's the smart play from Clayton. End of his shift, get it deep, kill the clock, under four minutes to go. Yaku Ratu, leg locked right now with Cody Cece in that far corner. San Jose emerges from the pile with the puck, and it's skated to center by William Eklund. He gets a check from Kolya Chonuk to dislodge him from the puck. And it's Andrew Agazino. He's had a lot of ice time, it feels like, here tonight. This line has been out there quite a bit. Ratu with Aginla and Agazino. Maverick Lamaru, stick handling at center for Utah. Lamaru just 20 years of age, taken 29th overall back in 2022 by the Arizona Coyotes. Chipped in by Lawson Kraus, much more seasons, one of the leaders on this team. Kraus and Doan behind the San Jose net. Doan fights off a check, finds Zuber. Shot on the short side, missed just on this near post. It's Zuber once again. He loads and fires, tipped on goal. Kraus and Doan battling for it, and it's Kraus who comes away with it. Lawson Kraus turns and wheels it around the boards all the way over to that far side. Nobody home for Utah, and Ian Cole taps it back towards the San Jose end. Under three to go in the third. Two to one hockey game, Utah maintaining their lead. This is Matt Benning, who scored for San Jose earlier, his second year with the team. Dealt in by Cunnan as Ingram stops it directly behind his own net. Ian Cole into the skates of Kyler Yamamoto, who takes a baseball swing at it to try and clear. Yamamoto with another good stick to break up that pass as Barrett Hayden gets to work, and all that work in the weight room paid off because here comes Hayden after he won the battle on the boards. Keller right in oh. front. They score! Once again, it's Yamamoto. This time, Keller was the setup man. Hayden will get an assist as well. Tic-tac-toe for Utah. The definition of defense to offense. What a play in the D zone from Kyler Yamamoto and Hayden. And watch this pass from Hayden to spin a rama on the forehand. He took a quick look before he spun to pick out exactly where Clayton Keller was going to. He hit him right on the tape. And then Clayton's going to get that pass back door 10 times out of 10. And all Kyler Yamamoto has to do is to open up that stick blade and deflect that puck into the attic of the net after he goes to the net hard with a strong bottom hand. What a play from that top line.
It's Yamamoto's second goal of the game, and that's a clip that you can show on the video board in dressing rooms to the youngsters. That's how you play along the wall. That's how you move the puck. That is so many good things going into that goal. And that pass from Hayden Unbelievable. to Keller. Unbelievable. I mean, that is a speech of a pass. Puck back in the Utah zone. This is Kevin Stenlet. It's a two-goal lead for Utah. Empty net now for San Jose. Less than two minutes remaining in the third period. Pass all the way across here in the Utah zone. Sent off the outside of the iron. That was Tyler Toffoli, the third post that San Jose has hit. This time Ingram makes a save. Toffoli to the puck in the corner as San Jose desperately tries to get something going here late. 90 seconds left in regulation after Yamamoto's second goal of the game. They both came in similar fashions as well. Both were assisted by Barrett Hayton on beautiful passes. A couple of peaches, if you will. I like peaches. Milos Kellerman down in the corner. <laughs> and this is cleared out by Utah. I spent some time in Georgia? Atlanta, so I'm okay. familiar with Nothing like a peach on a good hot peaches. day. That's right. But Hayden was outstanding. I really love the play on the wall. Out muscling a couple of sharks, moving the puck down the wing, and then you mentioned the spinorama. I mean, that's like what you read about right there. This is Luke Cunning down the wing, right in front. That shot was blocked. Guglielmi had dropped down into the play as the extra attacker, and Utah was able to prevent that from ever hitting Connor Ingram. Lost to cross, makes two great plays. First on the back check to deny the shot at the front of the net, and then he makes a physical play in front of the Utah bench to get the puck out of the zone. This is tapped to the line by Utah. Again, empty net right now for San Jose, and eventually the Sharks get it back. And another play there from Lawson Kraus to push the puck in the middle of the ice. It's a hat trick of plays on this shift for big number 67. Michelli chops at it on this near wall down to our right. Puck is trapped along the boards. Ten seconds left in regulation. Two-goal lead for Utah. And three unanswered goals for the Utah Hockey Club will give this team their fourth preseason win. The horn sounds as the puck is shot at the empty nets, and San Jose does not like that. And they're going after Maverick Lamaru after the play. And so the game is over, but there are some extracurriculars, as they say. Kraus having some chats with a couple of his good mates. But the battle is won. 3-1 to one is our final score. Utah with the last three goals. We had a tally from Sean Dersey on the power play, and then two goals from Kyler Yamamoto. Both backdoor tap-ins, but you get credit for those just like you do the others. Well, yes, they were tap-ins, Mike, but both of those, he had to get some elevation. He had to be able to get... Uh, that puck up into the upper portion of the net because both times Mackenzie Blackwood was working himself from right to left. So give him the credit for the finish, but also to work himself to the net. There is no perimeter hockey tonight for number 56, Skyler Yamamoto. He had one goal. Well, two goals, but on both those goals, there was one goal or one key is that he went to the net, strong bottom hand, and was able to redirect that puck in the back of the net. And the way he played tonight, yeah. and he was worthy of those scores, no doubt. It felt like the puck was following him, and he was active on the defensive side as well. Look, every game that he's played, he has been noticeable. And I think he's probably deserved four goals in the totality of games that he's played so far in the preseason. He's around the puck. He's hunting it. He's putting the opposition under pressure. And it might not always end up in a turnover, but later in the game, when there's more pressure, all of a sudden now that defenseman's going back on the puck and he's having to think and look over his shoulder, maybe he misses the puck. So I, I just think it's been a very impressive camp so far for Kyler Yamamoto. He gets the payoff, he gets the reward with two goals tonight, but it's not just the offense. It's how he's played without the puck and how good he's been on the forecheck and has made some good plays in the defensive zone too, which is the second goal that he scored. Yep. Him and Barrett Hayton teaming up in the D zone, make the play, get it out. It's a lot more fun playing offense when you're good in the D zone. He was playing with Barrett Hayden and Clayton Keller, two pretty good guys yeah. to be with on a line, but they looked like they had been playing together all year with that chemistry and the way they move the puck around. And the thing is, is when those guys play a creative style, but they do have that directness in their game as well, I think that's when they're playing at their best. Not going to overcomplicate things, but when plays need to be made, they have all the skill in the world. We have Kyler Yamamoto with us right now down near the dressing room. 
Kyler, congrats on the two goals. Congrats on the win. I was just telling Nick, it, it looked like you, Barrett Hayden, and Clayton Keller have been playing together all year. What was the chemistry like out there tonight? Yeah, no, it felt good. Um, you know, anytime you play with two skilled players like that, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to play with. So uh, we were reading good off each other tonight. Kyler, I had a great pleasure of watching you last year in Seattle, and the one thing that's always been evident is your work rate. You work to get to the high danger areas. You work to pressure on the forecheck, especially on your two goals tonight. What's going through your mind when you see a teammate get the puck and you see an opening to be able to get to the back door? Oh, I mean, when you're playing with two skilled players like that, try to get to the back door. Um, you know, they'll find you. So I was just trying to work to the back door, and, um, you know, they found me twice. And, and really quick, Kyler, I wanted just a, a quick follow-up, too. Both those play similar types of goals where you're going to the back door with, a, with a, a strong bottom hand, and you're able to get that puck up. Any sort of key you can take as far as stick positioning to be able to get some elevation on both those pucks? Uh, just make sure it doesn't hop over your stick. Um, you know, get good contact, and, um, you know, just try to raise it. Kyler, what's this camp been like for you coming in with something to prove and seeing a lot of action in these preseason games? What's it been like day in and day out at practices and in these games as well? Oh, a little nervous, but it's been a lot of fun. Um, you know, there's a great, great group of guys in the locker room. Um, you know, so it's been a lot of fun and, um, you know, taking every day. Well, it's been uh, fun watching you so far. We appreciate the time, Kyler. Thank you. Congrats, and uh, good luck the rest of the way. Way to go, Kyler. Appreciate it. Thank you. That was Kyler Yamamoto, star of the night. Yeah. Two tallies here this evening, both assisted by Barrett Hayden. Uh, Clayton Keller had his hands on both as well. It was fun to watch those three work together. But three unanswered goals for Utah, the story uh, coming from the second period on. Well, look, I, I was really impressed with the third period. And you look at the first 40 minutes, a little bit choppy, a little bit disorganized, yeah. a little disjointed, especially in terms of passing in the offensive zone. Off the rush, maybe trying to make it like a Rube Goldberg.